Hello everyone, welcome to this virtual session of TTS Level 2. Today we will be talking about feedback. We will have with us Hailing Duarte. She has a lot of experience in the English file as a teacher and as a trainer. She studied a bachelor's degree in public accounting and auditing. She is an ITOT certified technical auditor, SITBP TESOL, TAC course, and she was part of the Access program. She also has worked in the TTS as a trainer, in the Access program as a teacher, and as a business consultant independent. Welcome, Helen. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Annie. It's a pleasure for me to be here. So let's talk about the goals of this session. Yeah, so the goals of the session are, first, recall gives reflective cycle, identify those and don'ts of effective feedback, and give an example of a feedback session. All right. So teachers, you know, if you want, you can take your notebook and pencil to take notes of the session. Also answer the questions that will appear during the video. So let's start. Well, the first question that we have here is, what is feedback? And according to leolearning.com, feedback is a reaction or information that occurs as a result of actions or behaviors undertaken by an individual or a group. What is feedback for you, Danny? Well, feedback for me is information that we can receive in order to improve something that we are doing. Yes, and uh, you may be wondering why um, this picture refers, right? The picture that we can see on the presentation. So let's suppose, Danny, let's imagine that I invite you to a party, okay? So let's suppose that you're my guest and I offer you and all my guests a table with different food. From the table that you can see in the picture, what kind of food would you choose and why? Wow. <laughs> From this food, I would choose, let's see, the banana, the orange, grapes, and the mango. Okay. And why do you choose those fruits? Well, I would love to choose the hamburger or the pizza, but I'm trying to eat healthy this month, so that's why I choose that food. Thank you. The same happens with feedback. In your case, you uh, choose fruits because that is something that will help you, right? And uh, let's compare feedback with this table of food that we have here. You will take, you can take feedback, you take the suggestions or comments that will help you improve and you avoid something that you consider that won't help you. Wow, that makes a lot of sense now, this picture here. You can choose whatever you prefer, but you should choose what will help you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there is a question, how do I need to react to feedback, right? Every time I, I receive feedback. And uh, in my opinion, I will say that you should be thankful with the person that is providing you this. In this case, we, if we compare feedback with the example of the food, you should be thankful with the person that is offering you this food, uh, but you're going to take only what you need, only uh, the things that will help you improve. That's right. So now we have the Gibbs Reflective Cycle. Yes. And uh, what is Gibbs Reflective Cycle? This is a tool, an effective tool, to help you reflect after experience. And it's a useful model if you are new to reflection. As you know, reflection helps you to come up with feedback, right? And uh, it is broken into six sections. So the question is, what are its six sections? The first one is description. Then we have feelings. Then we move to evaluation, analysis, conclusions. And at the end, we come up with the action. Have you seen this cycle before, Danny? Yeah, I remember starting this cycle before. Nice. So in my experience, I can say that this is a tool that can guide you reflect not only on, on your lessons or the sessions that you can have. You can apply this in your role as a teacher, as a student, in your job, with the members of your family. And this can help you uh, to provide and receive feedback based on observation and evidence. We're going to move to the next uh, slide in which we're going to explain each uh, section of the Gibbs reflective cycle. So the first one that we have is description. 
What do you think description is, uh, Danny? I think that in this stage, the person that is using the tool has to describe what happened, like describe the event that they are reflecting on. Yeah. In this section, the person should describe what happened, as you mentioned, right? And uh, it is not necessary to be analytical at this stage. Just describe uh, what happened in in a specific moment of the experience that you have. You don't need to describe the whole thing, just a moment that you choose. And uh, there are some questions that can help you come up with a description. Uh, description. Those questions are, what happened? When and where did it happen? Who was present? What did you and the other people do? What was the outcome of the situation? Why were you there? And what did, uh, did you want to happen? So in these questions, you can provide a descriptions, right? You can talk about who were involved, uh, the specific things you did, and you can describe and, and give details about what happened. Okay, we are not including feelings here. We are no. saying the things as they were. We are talking facts. Exactly, and you can use, um, you can mention what a student did, if we are talking about a teaching situation, right? What you did, describe the moment, what happened in the moment. Okay. Then we move to the feelings. So in this stage, uh, the user of the person needs to explore any thoughts or feelings they had at the time of the experience, at the moment that they were doing a specific activity, right? Here, the user should explain feelings and give examples with directly reference the teaching experience. Talking again uh, of a teaching experience, right? And uh, we also have some questions to guide this, this section. Can you read them, Tony? Yeah, they go, what were you feeling during the situation? What were you feeling before and after the situation? What do you think other people were feeling about the situation? What do you think other people feel about the situation now? What were you thinking during the situation? What do you think about this? What do you think about the situation now? Yes, it is really important that you recognize that in this, uh, in this stage, you can uh, describe or you can talk about what you think other people were feeling. You don't know exactly what they were feeling, but you can interpret what they were feeling. Yeah, that's right. You certainly can't know what they were feeling, but mm -hmm. it's important yeah. to talk about feelings here and try to have interpretations of what other people feel. That's good because uh, sometimes we need to take out what we feel, no? It's a good stage. Exactly. Yeah, basically it concentrates on feelings and thoughts during that moment that uh, that you are uh, reflecting, right? Okay. So for example, in a real life situation, here is where teachers will say something like, I felt frustrated because the objective was not reached during the activity, or I felt uh, angry at my students because they didn't follow instructions or something like that, right? Exactly. They can mention, I, I could observe that this student was feeling uh, confused or something like, like that, right? Nice. Then we have the evaluation part. So in this section, the person of the user needs to discuss what went well or what didn't go well. And uh, you, should, you should start analyzing uh, what happened in there, right? It is important to consider areas for improvement and um, you should also consider the teacher's learning and also the student's learning. So both are involved in here. And of course, yes. Sorry. So we have to analyze from both sides what went well or wrong for the students and for the teacher. And for the teachers, yeah. And according to the evidence that you have, right? And we also have some questions that can help you uh, come up with uh, the evaluation part. So what was good and bad about the experience? You can describe what moment that went well and what moment that didn't go well. Um, what did you and other people contribute to the situation? In a positive way or in a negative way? Good questions. We yeah. can have more questions, right? We can come up with more questions. 
exactly. We are going to share in the resources more questions, a, a document in which you can find more questions. Nice. Let's go to the fourth. Yeah. In this section, in the analysis part, is where the user of the teacher makes sense of the experience. What is the make sense of the experience? What does this refer to? So in this section, the teacher or the person will analyze what helped or hindered the learning. Okay, so in this stage, we have questions. And they go like, why did things go well? Why didn't it go well? What sense can I make out of the situation? What knowledge, my own or others, can help me understand? For example, academic literature. Yeah. Um, this question referred to literature or research that you can consult in order to make sense of the experience. For example, if you uh, felt the instructions you gave were not clear, you could consult the educational research on how to communicate effectively. Talking about instructions, right? Mm -hmm. So, also here we can like think about going and ask a professional in the area if we did it, if we did a mistake talking about mathematics or teaching any subject we can go to a person that is more experienced than us to ask that person right exactly and if that person was observing your class that would be awesome because that person can provide a feedback hmm. based on on his or her experience right so this will be a good stage where we can ask for advice for a professional exactly very good let's go to the fifth one yes we have conclusions and at this stage the user of the teacher draws all the ideas together and they should now understand what they need to improve on and have some ideas on how to do this based on their wider research and we have some questions that can help you come up with uh, the conclusions what did i learn from the situation how could this have been a more positive situation for everyone involved? What skills do I need to develop for me to handle a situation like this better? What else could I have done? So here we wrap up everything and we give a formal conclusion of everything that we learned before. Yes, we take into consideration the description, the feelings, the evaluation and the analysis to come up with the conclusions. I like it. And the last stage that we have is the action plan. During this final stage, the person sums up all previous elements of the cycle and um, the person needs to create a step-by-step -step plan for the new learning experience. Here, the teacher identifies what they will gift, what they will develop, or what they will do different next time. Also here we have some questions. For example, if I had to do the same thing again, what would I do differently? How will I develop the required skills I need? And how can I make sure that I can act differently next time? Yes. These are good questions to help us because sometimes we don't have the skills that we need to reach the goals that we want. But if we follow the previous process, we should at least know what we have to do now to get those skills or how we can make sure that we uh, act differently next time. In my case, was using uh, my cell phone to take my time for the activities in the classes because I couldn't do it by myself. So I have to use a cell phone. That was a common action plan of me in the past. Yeah, <laughs> time is like a crucial factor every time we're teaching, right? When we have limit time, it is difficult to like finish a session because some of your students are talkative, they like to participate a lot. And if you stop uh, that, they will feel uncomfortable next time, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, and as you said before, it applies to different areas, not only on teaching. And for exactly. example, I am finishing my trimester at university and I think that an action plan for my next trimester of university that is starting next week is uh, dedicating one hour to study every day not only when i have homeworks or when i have exams or when i have classes but starting every day because that would help me a lot i know yeah and that's an action plan that you have but you need to like um create a step by step of what you're going to do in order to accomplish the action plan that you have right 
Because we can think about an action plan, and, and this can also happen. You can have 10 action plans, but that doesn't work if you don't concentrate on, on uh, working in one, two, or three specific action plans, right? That's right. Yeah, so I will add it to my agenda here, study time. <laughs> Great. <laughs> now let's see some do's about feedback. Yes. Some things that you need to do when giving or receiving feedback is to, to agree what you are going to focus on. And in this stage, it's really important that you choose a moment that went well or something that didn't go well, so you can summarize the feedback and ensure that you know the positive aspects and that you can also identify areas for improvement. Mm -hmm. So you have, by agreeing, you mean if two people are doing this feedback session, both have to agree we are going to focus on this situation, this moment, not in exactly. all of them. Exactly. And also that you are going to share one positive thing and one negative thing. You don't want to hear like three, four positive things and then 10 positive, uh, negative things, right? One and one will be balanced and will be uh, will create a great atmosphere when giving or receiving feedback. Okay. Then we have find an appropriate time and place. So in this one, we have to create an appropriate environment. In order to in order to do this, you have to gain the person you're uh, giving feedback, consent, and cooperation. So you need to agree that what you're going to say or that you're going what you're going to suggest is something that will help the, the other person. So an appropriate time and place, for me, it sounds like a time where I have time to do the feedback session, where I'm not running or running. Running uh -huh. I have to go to the soccer match or, or I am not under pressure. And a place is like uh, not surrounded by a lot of people. For me personally, I would like to have a feedback session in a place where I can talk freely with the person and in peace. <laughs> Exactly, and that's a, that's what feedback is, right? It should be personal, uh, and you should set a time in which you are not running, as you said. Um, and the perfect time will be after the experience. Mm, that's right. And talking about the place, maybe it's sometimes you cannot go to the best place ever, but try to find a good place just to give feedback, no? Yeah, a quiet place. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then we have um, the next dose. You have to start with what went well, uh, in this case, you have need to as accentuate the positive. What does this mean? Is that once you start with what went well, you have an appropriate environment to continue giving or receiving feedback. Mm -hmm. It's good to start with the good things because, well, some people prefer to start to start with the bad news, but it's good to start with the good ones. So you start everything in a good mood. Exactly. Just start like with something positive, right? And that will keep uh, the conversation fluent, I will say. Yeah, yeah. Then we have to distinguish between the intention and the effect. What does this mean? When we are talking about intention, it refers to what you thought you were doing, like what you say or do in this case and the effect or the impact that uh, what you're doing or saying um, in this case provokes uh, it's how the other person is perceiving how uh, what, what the person is um, seeing or hearing yeah i when talking about distinguishing the between the intention and effect is like the teacher maybe had something in mind but when he did it it had a different effect so it's not that you are blaming the teacher because what he did was wrong it's just the effect it's not that he did it with on purpose right it's just... exactly yeah For, i can say uh that like in in my uh, personal experience i can say that every time i give feedback my intention is to share a different perspective to a person it's based on, on what i observe right and maybe the, something that the other person couldn't observe because he or she was in another role, like in the role of the teacher, right? So um, I need to use the correct words to have that person perceive what I want to transmit. 
because my purpose is to uh, have that person uh, improve on something. Then the next one is to identify areas for improvement. As a personal experience, I have received comments uh, from my from the classes that I have taught, and uh, one of my friends told me once, "You did great. It was an awesome class." But I was expecting to get ideas on how to improve. I was expecting uh, like observations on like behaviors of students or something, right? So maybe suggestions about um, I I saw that. Uh, this activity was not working well because of this, so maybe next time you can try this, right? Yeah, and if uh, you don't find bad things or things that the teacher didn't go, didn't do well, there is always something to improve. Even if everything was uh, okay, no one is perfect. So there is always something that they can improve. And that would be so boring to have a feedback session without anything to improve, right? Exactly. And also in the in the things that you're doing well, you can say, well, next time I will do it better or something, right? Because there is always something that we can improve. Yeah, I think it's John Maxwell that has a, a quote like that. If in a meeting there is nothing to improve, that should not have been a meeting. That should have been an email. <laughs> yeah. Because every time you meet with someone, it should be for improvement, right? Exactly. Okay. And the last one? And the last one is offer alternatives. But you don't need to impose anything. You should avoid comments like, you should do this, you must do this, uh, because people decide what they want to do next, right? Um, you can offer comments like, why don't you try this next time? Or maybe you could do this different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, important to uh, state the, highlight the word offer there, because sometimes we have very good ideas of what the teacher can do differently next time, but we can never impose our ideas over the teachers. We can just offer what we think, and the teacher will take what he prefers. Exactly. Yeah. So these are some do's things that we exactly. have to do and now let's see the contrast some don'ts yes when giving and receiving feedback uh, there are some things that you don't have to do and the first one is generalize you need to be specific and describe what you observe or what you did every time that you're giving or in this case uh, uh, receiving feedback right you need to be specific on what happened during the, the session, during the class, or during any situation that you are uh, reflecting. But don't uh, generalize in, in what happened. Yes, we don't have to talk very generalized. The second don't is don't comment on things that can't be changed. It's Is it possible, uh, Helen, that there are some things that can't be changed? Yes, there are many factors uh, that can affect or hinder the learning, but uh, there are things that you don't have in your hands. And one of the examples is the weather, right? If it's rainy and you have the noise, maybe that can hinder students' learning, but that isn't something that you can control, right? Um, the circumstances around you, maybe noise in another classroom. Um, now that we have uh, this virtual way, you can have internet problems, the electricity, there are different factors that you cannot control, right? And uh, also we have other people's actions. That is, you cannot control people. Yes, those things are not worthy of investing a lot of time talking about, because anyways, we cannot change them. The third one is don't criticize without making recommendations. Yes, in this case, um, let's suppose that I give you a comment, right? Uh, Danny, I observed your class and this didn't work. So if I don't recommend you something, and if I am only criticizing your class, you will be bad, right? I will hurt your feelings, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, so in this... If you tell me that my class didn't work and you don't give me <laughs> a recommendation. <laughs> exactly. So in this case, we need to like mention things that didn't work, but we need to offer recommendations uh, to the person that we're giving feedback. The last don't is don't be dishonestly kind 
if there is room for improvement, be specific. So this happened when, let's suppose that a friend is observing your class. They can tell you, and this is like the experience that I uh, mentioned before, uh, they can tell you you did great, it was an awesome class, um, you did an awesome job, things like that, right? But what you need is something that they identify, something that you need to improve. So if there is room for improvement, please share it. Please be specific. Yeah, I think that true friends, they have to tell you the truth if, if, even if they think that it will hurt you. But we are in a feedback session, so we know that we have to be kind, but specific at the time. So it's a safe environment to express whatever we think that the teacher is doing right or wrong. So feelings should not be hurt during a feedback session. Yes. All right, so these are some things that we don't have to do during a feedback session. Of course, there are some more that your common sense will tell you, but these are some that are recommended not to do. And the next one is an example, right, Hayley? Yes, we have an example of a class. So right now we're gonna, well, in this case, it's a session. We're gonna observe what happened in a session, and then we're gonna have a feedback session. Right now, we're going to move to our first exercise, okay? So in the document that I sent this morning, you will find um, a handout number one in which you have the first exercise, okay? So what do you have to do in this exercise? You have to read example one and example two, and you have to complete this table, okay? So in example one, what approach was it? You have to identify which is the approach that the teacher is using to teach uh, the grammar point. And the same for the second one. What did the teacher do? And what did the students do? Okay? So, uh, I will create breakout rooms for you to share some ideas, for you to discuss what is the approach in there. And, as I told you, uh, you have this document in the WhatsApp group, right? This is the one that I sent this morning. So you have it there, some of you printed maybe. And let's now move to the breakout rooms. Okay, let's go to the next one. The topic. What did the teacher do in example number one? Okay, the teacher. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, okay, in the first example, the teacher just start giving an example of live um, experience with his own experience oh so the person who says hello everyone today we are going to see is the teacher yeah also is not is not a student is teacher center right let me see i have here oh, okay but it's okay okay so that is the the information that we have to write in what did the teacher do right yeah the teacher gave ideas from students, right? From students uh, to participate in the activity. Can we? That okay. was the video. <laughs> Let's now move to the feedback session. Let's have a feedback session. Hey, I'm um, talking about the experience before. We will analyze that uh, event. Can you describe the event that we are analyzing? Yes. So first. I assign a group work activity and I provided instructions, which were you have to read example one and example two, and you have to complete a table or chart. Um, and in that exercise, participants had to complete the information required, which what approach was it, what did the teacher do, what did the students do. Then, when I finished giving instructions, I created breakout rooms, and once participants joined the rooms, I visit them. And in the first group I visit, I noticed that one participant was kind of confused um, while understanding the example of the activity, right? But I let another participant explain the example and confirm the, the instructions given in the main room. Uh, so then I noticed that the participant understood what they have to do. And when we go back to the main room, this is something that you couldn't see in the video, but when we go back to the main room, I modeled the example as a teacher and participants easily identified the activity. So they could achieve the activity at the end. But according to what I observed in different rooms, 
they some of them were confused. Okay, so there was confusion. Yes. Then, talking about your feelings and what were you thinking during that uh, event? At the beginning, I thought that it was going to be easy for participants to get the ideas. According, but according to what I observed, some of them were confused because I didn't model the example before like them to join the, the breakout ones. And uh, when I could observe that, I feel disappointed. <laughs> okay. And how do you think that students felt during that event? Well, according to what I observed, I think they felt confused, but some of them, right? Okay. Evaluating that, what was good or bad about that experience? I would say that something good was um, that at the end, participants were able to complete the activity. However, it didn't work not checking understanding of the instructions and modeling the example of the activity that participants have to complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here I will give you just my feedback. According to my observation, something that was good was that you put them to work in groups. So if they had a, a, a question like happened, they can solve that question in the group. So that was something good that I could observe. And something that you can improve for the next time um, is checking that students understood the instructions before sending them to the to the rooms, breakout rooms. You sent them directly there and maybe they had questions, but they didn't have a chance at least to ask uh, their questions. So just make sure that they understand the, the questions, the, the instructions before performing the activity. Thank you, Annie, for your feedback. Okay. So based on my observation, on everything that we have discussed before, what sense can you make out of this experience? But I will say that something that helped uh, the learning process in this, in this example was having group work activities, because as you said, it helped the students to support each other, to solve or understand what they need to, to do, right? If uh, one participant didn't get the idea, so there is another participant that can explain the, the, the instructions in this case. And uh, I would say that something that hindered the learning was that participants were confused because they didn't use any strategy to check if they understood the, the instructions. As you say, I didn't uh, use ICQs and I, and I didn't model the, the examples that they, of the activity that they have to complete. So based on that, what do you need to improve for the next time? Based on this reflection, I learned that using ICQs and modeling would help me check if participants understand what they have to do and also uh, understand the context of the activity that they are performing. All right. And how would you improve it? Well, according to your observation and also my reflection, um, I am thinking now that next time I will use and write ICQs, instruction checking questions, to ask participants every time I give instructions in order to check if they understand instructions, right? And uh, I will use uh, modeling activities uh, to help participants understand what they have to do. And I will continue using grouping activities. Very good. So that's your action plan, step by step, and I hope it works for the next time. Thank you, Annie. So that was the feedback session following Gibbs reflective cycle. Yes, in this case, you like put things on the table and I decide what to take, right? And I didn't, I had many ideas on how you can improve for the next time, but I didn't impose them. I just gave you my recommendations and you came up with your own action plans. Yeah, and I feel comfortable because your feedback was balanced. One thing that went well and one thing that didn't go well. So I had the chance to improve next time. Yeah, and there were some audio problems, but we didn't talk about that because it's something that we cannot change. Exactly. So now let's talk about the experience, our experience and advice about feedback. As an experience, I can share that following this cycle helps you a lot, not only in teaching. When you are not teaching, you can also use this cycle to reflect about something that you are doing personal in your personal life. For example, in my experience is with my schedule, 
I try to organize my day very well, but I fail and I fail and I fail in some areas of my uh, life. So what I do is that I take Sundays to reflect about all the activities that I did during the week. And I try to see what I didn't do. For example, today, well, this week that is finishing because today is Saturday, um, I didn't complete reports. And the problem that I can see is that they are set to be worked uh, at night. Maybe I have to put them in the morning. So I reflect, right? I try to use uh, Sundays to reflect on my personal life. You can also use the, this cycle to reflect in other areas. Yes. Thank you, Dani, for sharing that experience that you have. And uh, my advice for you will be that you can use feedback as a tool to improve. As Danny was mentioning in his experience, uh, reflection is a tool for improvement, right? Um, another advice, piece of advice that I can give you is don't take feedback personal. Be professional, take it in, in, like in a professional way because this is something that will help improve. And as a personal experience, I would say that feedback has helped me improve in many things, not only in, in teaching. And uh, let's consider feedback as a vital part of education and also training. And uh, you will see that if you apply Kids Reflective Cycle, it will help you maximize your potential and professional development at different stages. It will raise your awareness of strengths and areas for improvement, and it will help you identify actions to be taken to improve performance. What's next? Now, teachers, you have to go to the next activities in the course. Right now, you finish the virtual session. You will have a check here if you finish it. You will have to work on the quiz, the post forum. You will be uh, able to, uh, to watch the material of the course if you finish the previous activities, uh, the assignment. And if you complete all of the previous activities and you have a score higher than 61%, you will be able to download your certificate. Thank you, Helene, for sharing with us about this amazing topic of feedback, for diving in uh, deeper and sharing about how to do it, how not to do it, and giving you recommendations and experience. Thank you so much. Welcome, Danny. It was a pleasure. And to finish this session, I would like to share this phrase with you. And it is, feedback is the breakfast of champions. So you decide what, which feedback to take. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>